from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein to the Lucas and Roddenberry franchises, the Martian Chronicles, and beyond. Science fiction is undeniably a part of our culture. But what exactly is science fiction? And how do you write a science fiction novel? This series will attempt to answer those questions. Okay, welcome. We're back in studio with Kate and Adam, and it's a, a another session of um, our journey of, of writing a science fiction novel. So I've been really excited, and I think you guys have, have been as well, as to how this is actually developing. It seems to it seems to be grafting onto our um, our workflow here, doesn't it? You know, quite nicely the creative approach. I think so. Yes. It's honestly, it sits in the back of the mind, my mind pretty much all the time. <laughs> um, the the question of like when I actually sit down and hammer out some writing that is a little more difficult, but uh, finding time, it's 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 the needle's moving. So. So where was the where was the tennis ball lobbing to? Was it going to Adam or was it going to Kate? I can't quite remember. Like what was the uh, over to me? Okay, Adam. Okay, did you drop the ball or we? Uh, it's okay if you do, right? No, We're gonna gotta, look at the ball on the on the tarmac. But you know. I got a I got a bunch written actually. Um, wow, good for you. Okay. Yeah, I mean to be honest, I wrote most of it a few weeks ago, but we just. We haven't gotten to it yet, so there's a, there's a bunch of stuff there now. You can look at. Um, Throw it up on the screen. That sounds kind of dirty, but you know what? <laughs> Wasn't me this time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay. You want me to share my screen here? Hey, Kate, you're always in good light. Look at that. You know, you got uh, you know so much so much brightness around you. The, yeah. Uh, Oh, you know, you should you should have sunglasses on it. Your future looks very bright. <laughs> I'll, I'll work on my lighting issues. <laughs> I had my husband install a dimmer switch. Wait for it. Let's see, is it going to work? A little bit. Uh, better. I think you know. I think it's something to do with the camera setting, like a auto exposure or something like this. It's, now. That's, a bit better. I mean, yeah, the, the dimmer worked a little better, but um, anyway, yeah, it's just to you know. your right. Like your left half is good. Your right half is uh, like blowing up, blowing away. Yeah. Anyway, all right. I think it, it might be an auto exposure setting on the camera somewhere. Like, sir, I will look it up. Okay. <laughs> all right, Adam. Oh, you've got it up there. Okay. All right. There we go. So, if you recall, I wrote the beginning. Beginning was kind of this trippy dream sequence, kind of, you know, a nod to Christopher Nolan. Uh, and then I kind of woke up. And then we had talked a little bit about like, okay, your first task, you kind of set this kind of interesting scene, is to um, uh, make people care for this character, right? We want to kind of walk them through the day, um, what's going to happen. So I spent you know, quite a bit of time, pages here. Nothing's really happening other than the character is kind of getting up, going about his day, and he's kind of rattled from the dream that he had. He's kind of thrown off. And it's kind of just, um, I don't know, kind of, it's kind of a dive into his mind a little bit. Um, well, let's read a section. Let's, um, I don't know if you'll intuitively know where to jump in, but. Yeah, yeah, let's see if we can capture yeah, well, a little bit of that feeling. Let me try and um, find a good spot here. Uh, well, maybe I'm just going to start here. Zoom in, I'm old. Oh, okay, zoom in. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be seeing like me trying to read it. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, we kind of started here. Good morning, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. Uh, with a shake, I climb out of bed and walk. I need blood to flow, I need to focus. The construct shifts from the ceiling to the wall in front of me while all other surfaces shift with interwoven streams of color. Every surface of my house is made of a smooth adaptive polymer designed to adapt to my senses 
and my physical position, everything to fill my brain with the flow. It is as if I'm walking on glass over top of the ocean, except instead of fish, I see videos, ads, notifications, messages, an endless flow of information. My wall is my working space, fluidly shifting as I move, implant in the top of my spinal cord, directing the flow to adapt to my desires. Uh, a video catches my eye instantly. A three-dimensional holographic projection appears directly in front of me, more fighting in the reach. There's I got a question. Fighting. I got a well, question. The, th this is a pretty important technology question. So the implant in the top of my spinal cord directing the flow to adapt my desires. Um, what what are you trying to say there that that, that it actually can um, give the person who has the spinal cord enhancement, okay, um, mm -hmm. the ability to circumvent desires? No, to I think I'm trying them, to... to preemptively strike them, or how does that, how is that imagined there? I'm, what I'm imagining here is there, there's an implant and maybe spinal cord is the wrong piece no, of it. No, actually, I love, I love it. But, I love it. It's actually really, really significant to consciousness. So, but what I, what I imagined is if you had, if, if your digital feed, let's say, could respond to your mood and feed you information depending on how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. So it could respond to your emotions. Um, this is kind of what I'm imagining. Ooh, right. cool. Yeah. All I thought about is like, oh, my feet are cold. Maybe it turns on the floor heat. <laughs> sure, that too, right? Like all of that. It kind of like it, it responds to your physical state um, and your emotional state. It's kind of like feeding you. Uh, this is this virtual world, depending on your mood. Um, That's cool. Very cool. Uh, so this is where I said, hey, a video catches my eye. So like a flicker in my eye, and I kind of noticed the, the headline or something, and it pops up in front. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to see that, right? I'm disinterested in this. I just wave it away. Um, so this is kind of like he's been being assaulted by this, right? He's kind of. The virtual world is is, is trying to, but he, the, it's trying to contrast the fact that he's just had a nightmare and he's a little bit shaken and he's kind of disoriented a little bit. Um, so this is where I say here, for a moment my stride falters as a single fleeting thought runs through my head. I'm scared. Even worse, I'm not sure what to do about it. Yet it is only a passing thought caught in a river of information my mind is beginning to turn through and I simply carry on. My schedule for today is displayed in three dimensions around me. By habit, I've called it up without realizing it. Immediately, notification pings begin popping up. Uh, like a crazed person swatting at flies, I frantically wave it all away. Today, I need a second. So, um, oh, this part of the thought was cool. As I walk through the flow-filled hallway, a doorway forms seeming out of nothingness. I don't even slow. The liquid walls moving and shifting are second nature. I can't imagine it any other way. Wow. <laughs> cool. Once the room senses my presence, nanobots assemble a sink directly in front of me. A mirror appears on the wall, or rather, a video screen showing me my reflection. Taking a deep breath, I pause and splash cold water on my face, and for a moment I enjoy the sensation of every water droplet invigorating my senses. Fatigue drains away with the water as it circles the drain. Suit, executive class, blue. As I stare at the mirror, suddenly I see myself in a suit. The image is adaptive, meaning it tweaks my reflection based on the pleasure response in my brain. So I look thinner, stronger, younger even. A <laughs> nod in the suit forms around my body, the nanofiber is constructing around me. Every article of clothing is pre-programmed and approved, except for the socks. So this is where I'm kind of interested. Hang on. Yep. I need you to back up. Where? Should we put something in there about the water no longer being sourced from Earth, but now being sourced from the moon and we could talk to your buddy? <laughs> Oh, there you go. I like that. Um, <gasps> cold water. I'll put a little comment here. Um, there we go. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited so, to see where you take the socks here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this, this is where I'm taking something innocuous and I'm trying to make it important. <laughs> God, <I> love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so he's got his suit, right? Everything except for the socks. Once, when my son was eight, he commented that I was boring. 
I had arranged to take him through a history simulation of Earth's 21st century safaris. I've always loved the thought of the open air and heated wilderness of the Sahara. It was something I dreamed about as a child. I grimaced ever so slightly as the memory quite literally played out in front of me. Quinn, this is boring. I don't care. You are boring. End signal. We did not visit the Sahara that day, nor any other. Like a wounded thing, I had recoiled, retreating to this very room and staring into this very mirror, I had asked a simple question. Am I boring? A psychologist once told me what I was really asking was, am I worthy? Whatever. From that point forward, I allowed the type to randomly pick one piece of clothing, my socks. With a gleeful anticipation, I wait until they form over my feet. Feeling myself for a brief moment, I look down. Yesterday was fish. Today, today is lions, as in 21st African lions. Seriously, today is not my day. Uh, to my right, a new door begins to form. This one's played as a more majestic with wood paneling and a lion's head knocker. That door always changes to suit my mood, or at least reflects the signal of my input is picking up from my subconscious. Not that door, not that room, not today. I blink and the half-formed passageway disintegrates away. With a grunt, I dismiss the mirror and sink. Shoes form over my feet as I'm already walking out the door, leaving my personal oasis of vulnerability behind. I engage the flow. <laughs> I love it. That's great. <laughs> That's really good. So awesome. That's really, really good. What's the size of that paragraph or that, uh, is it, was it intended to be a chapter? Yeah, like I kind of combined it with the, um, uh, let's see here, uh, with the dream sequence, but that sequence, let's see, so 775 words, so all in all. Uh, no, but how much is the chapter, do you think? Maybe twice that. Oh, okay. okay. Very long. All right. So yeah, you're clipping out. And what chapter is that? That's chapter one. Oh, it's still in chapter one. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. 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 And then I, I started in just chapter two and I thought, okay, he's going to gauge the flow. And I thought, hey, that's a good interjection where I, I just go into a little bit of history of like, what is the flow? And then I would get into, um, but I actually, um, so I added that bit about that door, that interesting yeah. door, right? That I didn't really tell you what it was yet because Caitlin explains it later in her writing. And I brought that in here. He's got this place where he keeps interesting like knickknacks and historic memorabilia and like collections of physical items that like anchor him, I think, in center of this person. But it's a it's like a secret place and he doesn't go there all the time. So. I took that from Caitlin's piece, which she wrote later, and I brought it in. I kind of planted a seed here. Like later, I think that room is going to play a um, something important. Anyway, that's it's beautiful to watch the mind meld, you guys. You want to <laughs> recognize it? That's pretty cool. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, it's kind of kind of fun just to like imagine. Um, I don't know when you're when you're waking up in the morning and you're going about your business and then something that reminds you of an emotional event, right? So I was trying to really make this person feel vulnerable. And now we're going to throw the world in Adam and I'm going to try and um, just kind of see what happens with this person when the, when the, the, just the storm comes, right? So there you go. What are you thinking, Kate? I love it. I love Adam's writing. It's very eloquent and like I just get I get lost in, in what's happening. So I'm super excited for for it to keep going. I loved um I loved the way the room is like melding and 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 molding. Yeah. I had originally pictured the house like that. So this is really cool like to kind of investigate and figure out how this how the house is there. Like I assume you're using like nano robotics. To like yeah I, I just pictured like a fluid sort of shifting space that doesn't have to maintain a single physical outline right like maybe, uh, maybe it is only this big and it just like or it stacks up over here and it like does whatever it does so like it, it, um, this isn't a virtual space this is like a physical space like physically the walls can move that's what I was picturing. Yeah. Like, oh, I like that. Have you ever seen? Okay, this is so so nerdy. This is. Have you ever seen Hero? 
I think it's called uh, Hero Six. It's a Disney movie with the big white. Oh yeah, guy. yeah, yeah, the big inflatable guy. Yeah. Right, you know how he talks about the nano robots and how they could build anything and all this stuff. That kind of got me thinking of what you were doing, right? Mm-hmm. And then the other thing I thought of too is I've I've seen this um, countertop where it's a flat countertop, but you like touch it and the whole thing melds into a sink and then water flows out the back of it. And then the countertop actually comes back into a countertop and like a squeegee comes and wipes it. This actually exists already. Cool. Right. But it looks like a marble countertop until it starts to just form into a sink. Have you seen this, Dan? No. All right. It's sexy. (laughs) Yeah, now you got to Google it. It's it's sexy. But you could take it one step further. What I was picturing was like even the piping, all this stuff, the mechanical, the, all that is just like appears, goes away, whatever. Yeah. Well, and here's why I like this because like if we're no longer harvesting the water from the earth, right? People are actually have to source their water. They're probably all tanking it. So mm-hmm. it, you don't need to have pipes running into like a, a water treatment plant like it's it's probably right. all delivered so that's probably where it could be really um no i don't i don't have the right search terms here so melting was the description they used but um what would i search for is a google i don't know huh. future counter i don't know future um counter uh sink, <laughs> sink disappear yeah, maybe try disappearing sink. Has a sink that disappears. There you go. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, the one I saw is this black one. Okay. Here, Here we go. Is it? Do you got it? I think so. I can always put. There's this one in the chat. I think it was this one. I, no, this wasn't the one. No, that's not the no. one. Can you hear? Can you hear? Uh, can you hear it? No. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. This is it. The one I put in the chat. Okay. The okay. Chat. It's it. Okay. It's sexy. All right. Okay. 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 One in the chat. Here it is. Okay, hold on. What's going on here? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I really liked it. I was like, ooh, this is fun. Okay, here it is. Okay, you ready? Yeah. It should play. You guys should be able to hear this. That's awesome. Okay, you know why I love it? Why? Because I just picture my husband shaving and all those little itty bitty hair pieces (laughs) that I don't know how they get effing everywhere, but they're everywhere. And he doesn't like, for my husband being so OCD clean guy, like he cleans a lot, like the place is immaculate. Those hairs, I don't know why he can't see them. He doesn't clean them. And all I picture is this like little brush coming in, like all the hairs are gone. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's right with the timing of the wait for it because it's it's like um you know we're we're all involved at some point in our lives in construction or this kind of thing. You have to shop for houses and all this kind of thing. So you're like, oh, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. And then Kate says, wait for it because 
you know, is this, is this the typical, you know, kind of woman thing to say, yeah, but how the fuck am I going to clean the thing? Right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Whoop, be like sold. <laughs> Take my money. Oh yeah. Cause you know, I love those sinks that have the bowl on yeah. them, but they're such mm. a biatch to clean. Mm. Right. Like the bowl top sinks are so hard and then they get this like, yeah. So things that look nice aren't always user friendly, but if you can have both winning, winning in my head, aesthetically functional. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. I feel like we're now going to have to add in a little bit there commenting on cleaning and and that kind of thing. Self-cleaning infrared. Guys, I have to, I have to put the marketing flag up here. Go for it. Why don't we approach that guy, that inventor and say, we want to put it into our new science fiction book. We should. The only thing that you can say is no. Well, there's three. It's about, it's not a binary. It's like, no or ignore or yes for this amount of money <laughs> oh, oh I didn't, yeah, exactly yeah yeah percentage of the royalties that's how you count right right yeah for the millions <laughs> in pre-sales well, I, you know but wait a minute you guys have this whole network of what you know then have him come be a part of it i mean this can't be his only claim to be able to get this fantastic you know you know technology out right There's so really- if he's an inventor Maybe yeah, we reach out to this guy. If he's an inventor, yeah. maybe he wants to like invent some cool things for our book in the housing design. Yeah, or he wants, I mean, you know, he wants to, you know, network with you guys. You guys have a good network, right? Outside of science writing, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Bridging the gap between these two things, right? I think we invite him on the show. Let's see. Exactly. Yeah. What you is know, your inspiration for this? Like, you know, yep. what's your next big thing right this is what we are imagining right liquid wall blah, blah, blah. do you think that's feasible It'd be fun. yeah I, I think it's it's kind of like this slowing it down enough to smell the flowers kind of thing there is an opportunity opportunities present themselves and there's reach out it's worth an email it's worth a five minute email hey we really like this we're talking about it here's our show blah 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 blah, blah. right would you like to be a part Let's of see. it Okay, I'm um, doing the, it as we speak. I think. Yeah, the the um, I have this carpe diem sort of um, uh, almost like action plan. Anytime I think, oh, I'll do that later, I go, ah, why did I just say that to myself? I got to do it right now, right? Because it just if it gets put into a future file folder, it's like so hard to retrieve sometimes. It's true, right? it's hot. Honestly, it um, well, I'm finding that even with this with the rest of this writing, right? Mm-hmm. I get in the mood and something distracts me and I don't write, then I'll, I'll lose the, that inspiration is gone. And the next time I'll, I'll come back at a convenient time and now I'm not feeling inspired. I've like missed the opportunity, right? The creativity wanted out. And if I don't let it out, yeah. it's gonna go somewhere else, right? Just capture it, just pull it up, have the, have the, um, you know, the word document that you're working on always handy on your desktop. So you can just plop it open, boom, make a few notes, move on, keep going. Right. That's, that's really important. It really becomes kind of, uh, uh you know, uh, almost like a best friend in a way. Right. Mm-hmm. There's a lot, it should be a love hate relationship with this, you know, with this, with this birthing sure. process of a book. Right. <laughs> well, I'm actually, I am predicting that it might accelerate a little bit here because things always slow down work-wise kind of second half of November, December. It's always slower. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, who knows? Maybe this will move a little bit faster towards the end of the year here. It's happening. It's my yeah, I just, just reached out to the guy. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a do it now kind of girl. Do you got yeah, yeah. That's good. That's that's uh very popular, I bet, in high school. <laughs> no. Why? What what did you think of? I mean <laughs> doing school assignments and stuff, right? Like yeah. your teachers must have loved you. What what were you thinking about? I don't know. Did? I don't know, Dan. That's exactly what I was thinking. Good. Okay, well, yeah. Back to marketing. Um <laughs> I was going to say, you know, okay, the door that you got with the big knocker, Harry nice. Potter kind of thing, right? You know? Yeah. I think in, in these periods of time, I really wish that um, as somebody that's wearing a marketing hat says, okay, you have an opportunity to create content. So really storyboard what 
what could we do to showcase that door, for example, or oh. something at this moment, because you don't want to do all the book and then go, okay, now we're going to go back and do the marketing thing. You can co-create the marketing pieces and the little videos and the little teaser. Kind of like Disney stuff. and Pirates of the Caribbean, where they create entire scenes that they could turn into rides. Yeah. Right. There's like these ob obscure, yeah. superfluous, like unnecessarily complex fighting scenes because they want it to be a ride later like that kind of but you don't <laughs> want to sacrifice your your integrity as a writer but i think you also want to say like there's usually a hook and something that you want to emphasize and mm -hmm. if that's the hook that pulls somebody in to go oh yeah i want that remember um you know we want people to pre-order your book right, right? so Bye. Yeah, that's cool. It could represent something, right? In this case, that door knocker in particular represents, uh, I don't know. Connection to the past. The connection to the past, the humanity. His great grandma. And that just that symbol could then represent in that series of posts, right? The, the so you write a paragraph or half a paragraph that says, with the image that you find. And, and, mm -hmm. and here's the thing that kind of helps, helps me when I consult the Google Oracle. Sometimes I actually use it as a as a um, as as something that I don't know what Google's going to serve up. Like we, we could do it right now, right? I'll show you. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I if I type in, or actually, I'll let you, Adam, share your screen and open up a new uh, Google page, okay? And sure. search and search for door knocker iron, uh, door knocker lion. Okay, and then let's let's see what pops up. The reason is is that rather than thinking, oh, that's the one I want to choose, that sometimes bound yourself by what Google is actually showing you, right? It's, it, it's like, oh, really? This is what people think of when they use. Well, somehow I went incognito here. Hmm, there we go. All right. Do you see Google? Did that work? Uh, yeah. There we go. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go lion door knocker. And then images, right? Yeah. And so, okay. So, you know, for, for me, um, do you want one that shows the whole door? Possibly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But this is kind of nailing it, right? Yeah. Uh, door with oh, this kind of cool. This one. First oh door. yeah, that's really, really, really cool. Right, it kind of looks like that liquid surface, right? I like that one. First Lord of the Treasury. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, you know, or even this one, right? It's just like this. Like I like the spot there's like you know light and otherwise dark space right it's a metaphor for a lot of different things yeah so even if it's a reading about this with a superimposed thing of your book and you know these this is mm -hmm. um you know now now you're going to have let's say through the series of the writing of your book you have at least a dozen of these little videos mm -hmm. Right, these little catcher things. Well, you've when you know when the book publisher says to you, "Well, do you have any marketing?" and you say, "Yeah, we've got these little videos," and they've already got some equity in the, um, right. And then we could play like the futures knocking. There we go. All sorts of yeah, you can get all stuff that's kind of too <laughs> cheesy for the actual book, but it's just <laughs> like you know, like wink, wink, you know, kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. I like so I encourage funny. you to do that because you don't want to, you, you, you go through the whole process, you develop the assets as the ideas are really fresh. And then, you know, we almost just do it sort of naturally, right? Like, um, well, yeah. and the door knocker is one of those things that like is antique to us, right? Like now, mm -hmm. if you don't have a doorbell with a camera on it, but like in the future, it'll be a camera and a notification comes to you you don't like right like you're not going to have a physical thing to touch to be like i'm here 
Well, I actually think that would be a great scene where someone physically like comes and that's what happens. They like don't know how to get in and he doesn't know how to answer or something. There's like so foreign to them that someone would actually physically I think that could be if you play with that from a, I love it. So like right? I'm about to write the scene where he gets rescued after getting um left to die. Mm-hmm. Right? And that could be one of the things is like when they're in the like when they're in that village or whatever, like he witnesses somebody physically knock on a door and he's like, whoa, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Like you you literally just smashed that piece of wood to get somebody's attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it seems what? so barbaric. This could be a fun, right? If you're writing that scene, because we we can purposely juxtapose 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 uh, that with some of the stuff from the beginning. We want to make sure some of the things like tick this. I I, I love it, Adam, with the speaking illiteracy, right? Like I have yeah. these moments too, where I see the <laughs> words like, constantly. Right. What I read, it makes sense in my head, and I think, have I ever oh. pronounced this word before? but do you do you ever say juxtapose? juxtapose right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i suppose i juxtapose yeah right <laughs> hmm. you know <laughs> there's actually a, a word for uh, i don't know if you guys watch um ted lasso One yes jokes in the show is they like they say a word too much and then it like loses its meaning <laughs> there's it's actually a scientific word for that. Anyway. Um, hmm. Cool. Oh, this is yeah. fun. The last is hilarious. Yeah, that's a good show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like your ideas, Dan. I'm going to send you a few things and maybe we'll make a few like still posts as well and just kind of keep it, keep it going. Okay. Um, yeah, so what's, uh, what's on the horizon here for the next, um, is, you know, so we're gonna, we're gonna let Kate do the, um, you know, the next reading in a couple weeks from now. Um, any, any thoughts on where you're going to take this, Kate? Yeah. Um, so the last, the last I read, the, our two hackers, um, they, they hacked the system, right? And so now they actually, I'm going to write it from their perspective of the pod comes down. And this is the last scene we ended with our, with Quinn was that they were landing and he thought he was there, but it all of a sudden things go wrong. Right. And he kind of blacks out and they remove his sight and everything. Right. So essentially what these two hackers do is one, one of them is the the computer hacker and the other guy is the bio surgeon if you will who's actually going to remove the the implant because they're using that implant to breach the system on earth Mm. right and all they have to do is code it such that it's it's um reached its the system and like they've removed it from the actual um sort of blockchain to say that everything's already happened even though it hasn't in the system so nobody tracks that this guy's gone missing that quinn is missing And so I've got to write his sort of like they're doing that. And then his coming to, to this face, this unknown face on this unknown planet. You know, I'm going to ask if you're envisioning it in any way, like a, um, like a rebel move, because Quinn kind of has this really cool, um, like rebel feeling to him or her. And, you know, it'd be interesting if you, if you could build up, um you know some populations of 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 suffering like uh, you know people that are disconnected and so that this is a a a liberation move right liberating people from uh from technology and i i I know this kind of counteracts with the idea that um you you relinquish uh actually physical years of your life right because we've talked about this before that if you're unplugged from the system but you know, this is a this is a very um, real part of the discussion of what it means to be some uh, to be human. Is um, y- you know how much technology do we plug into, and do we have the forewithal to uh, or the wherewithal to um, say when enough is, right? And so, 
Interesting. And there's like that oppressed population. Like this, Quinn actually discovers that there's this this community of liberated people that are more in touch with their, you know, their more primitive being. And yeah, they don't live as long, but they live better or whatever. And and so it's like almost like a tribal return to go. Those were a they, but they're no longer a they. They're actually a holy fuck. You well, know, I don't know if you noticed in, in that scene that I wrote where the the he notices an article and it pops up and he says, "Oh, more fighting in, in the reach." I called it the reach, and I think Kaylin might have had a different name for it. Another I call it the edge, but we can figure that out later. Whatever. That's like the, I guess the the foreshadowing. I guess right because yeah. the, the idea is you back. He has to engage these people who he's previously turned his knows that right the outsiders of the group and he's got to kind of um get to know like you said the rebel alliance he's got to go there meet those people and i think we wanted to explore um kind of a metaphor for creating economies that work in super poor countries like right now if going there and creating some kind of business economics whatever in this place that could work with right like bridging the two worlds in a way that's never been done before yeah Um, and i think too like so on this planet that he's been stranded and left he gets um saved by this humanoid group who is unplugged and they live they're living deeper meaning lives so because he's he's always probably ignoring the reach like everybody else they it's a pest it's a you know disease on their society but because he lives with this humanoid um, group while he heals and tries to find a way back into the system, he understands what it means to live deeper, not longer. And so it's this revelation, I think this journey where he's like, wow, you know, I could live to 200, but it wouldn't matter if I'm not living deeper, if I'm not present, if I'm not connected right? It's just a number now. And he gets it. So when he, when he finally um, sneaks back into the system, he has to go to the, the reach or the edge because he's not back in the system. Like he can't get into his house. He can't do any of this stuff without being his chipped in. Like you're done, you're out. So he's got to find a way back in where somebody recognizes him. And so I think what's really cool there is these, he's going to have a deeper understanding for these people who he thought would just dismiss like this this disease on on society he understands some of them better and i think that's a cool connection piece where it's he he starts to discover what the opportunities are there i love it you know what i do, i really like you guys to make a note of is that that slimming feature that happened within his house there's an opportunity for him and for you guys to contrast him in front of a mirror that looks um you know, 21st Ooh. century. And, and, and you're looking at yourself, you're looking at your wrinkles, you're looking at your receding hairline, you're looking at, uh, you know, women have thinning hair. Maybe that's the way we do it. Women, oh, I like you know, that. Right. And then all the insecurities just smack you in the face and go, I'm not the leader I thought I was, but I know I am, but I don't see that person. What oh, I, I love it. And I love the, the image of him walking and like being startled by somebody and not even realizing that it's his own reflection. Yeah. And that, that's mm-hmm. such a, that's a, that's such a pivotal moment <laughs> uh, for consciousness because that's the moment when the child becomes self-aware, right. And, yeah. um, you know, recognizes you. himself in the mirror, right. This is a, a psychological. So make a note, say, what is that research really important, right? Because you know, you have children, you go, well, when did they notice all of a sudden that, you know, my son or daughter knew they were uh, uh, an entity, right? Like visually, we we're able to actually know that that was them. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's a piagering, pia, uh, piaget, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Adam said, right? Like, I can't say, that. I read it a thousand times, but I never really say, uh, I like this a lot. Right? I like I I so love this because I spend in the morning and I'm like, who's that grade hair girl coming out? I I don't know her. Who's this? But it's so funny because it's amazing how quick we turn on our social media features when we're making videos and all of a sudden 
the filter goes automatically on. Away go my wrinkles, away go my gray hair, away goes all the stuff that's me. And then it's you turn the filter off and you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, and yeah, I mean, yeah, we're having filter challenges right now. But I love this concept, Adam, that in the future, your mirror will just do it for you. Right. And will we actually not be able to recognize ourselves because all we're seeing back on ourselves is who we want to be, not who we actually are. Now, you really could take this and say that there's a whole narrative that starts to develop for cultural wellness. Right. So how how does this particular um, entity in the cog or number five, four, three, two, seven, blah, 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 a citizen number, blah, 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 blah. How do they project themselves in a, um, you know, a self-image and in an identity statement, right? And having the data, not to say it's a nefarious sort of like ill-advised or, uh, it, um, you know, dystopia or anything, but, you know, there's, you know, maybe make the case that people are actually trying to um, use technology to, um, uh, you know, to make us a more psychologically healthy society, like advocate for that, right? In the way and make it and defend it and build it that way, right? Well, this just offers a whole realm of crazy things. Like my husband likes me to have dark hair and he wants me to dye my hair and clear out my grades. That's his personal preference on what he thinks is, you know, sexy. Me, myself, I want crazy colored hair. I want to have like the fire engine red hair. I want to do fun stuff. And he's like, no, you're a businesswoman. You can't do that. And so wouldn't it be neat if like, you could be like, well, I want to see this person with this color hair. Oh, now yeah. I'm attracted to them. So like their personality, you could select how, so you have a filter specific to somebody else. Oh shit. You know, you know, the idea that popped in my head, this is a little bit embarrassing, but, um, you, okay. So you imagine the dynamic between a man and a woman, right? So they're sitting mm -hmm. in a business sort of thing. Right. And so, yeah. you know, the woman's image projects, she's comfortable. She projects in, a uh, like a tank top and a little bit more relaxed and blah, 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 and all this. But then his image starts to change and she's like, um, no, I don't like that. So all of a sudden she's got like this turtleneck on. <laughs> <laughs> See? I had a you thick cardigan and she's all like wrapped up and huddled, you know, and just like. <laughs> okay. So I, know cool I know we're at time. I know we're at time, but I have to tell this story. <laughs> okay. So I, I tend to run hot. And so I often wear shirts that are sleeveless or tank tops. Right. Um, and I was wearing like, it came up high and it was a, just a tank but it came up high, right? And it, I had my shoulders showing and I got told by a client that I was dressed inappropriately. And for, like still to this day, I haven't worn that shirt. I love the shirt. I haven't worn it because I feel self-conscious in it. And every time I don't have something covering my shoulders, I'm now super self-conscious of my shoulders, which I didn't think anything of it before. I was just comfortable in my own skin. And it's amazing how one comment can change yeah. how we perceive ourselves and how we operate. Yeah. Okay. I, I applaud you for that because it's, uh, it's vulnerable in a way, but um, you know, you, you, you could go elbow swinging and say, you know, that's not fair. I'm going to do it anyways, but you can't not unhear that comment. Like it was shocking to you. You're comfortable in your own skin. All of a sudden now, it's brought to your attention, so you can't unhear it. And so it kind of sours something that, you know, there's no need for that, right? But we can't, how do we undo that, right? You know, it's just interesting. I know. And, and me being comfortable in my own skin might make somebody else com uncomfortable, yeah. right? And so where's the balance between, like, who yeah, I am and you. how I want to be and yeah. how I'm impacting others. It's very interesting. This whole concept, I know we're running over time, but I just, I had to tell that story. It was so relevant. And then I just, yeah, to this day, okay. I still feel super self-conscious. And I always ask people, is it okay if my shoulders show? <laughs> I need to, I like, I'm too hot. I got to take my sweater off. Is anybody offended by my shoulders? Yeah. Yeah. You've heard me All say right. it right now. Lots. Yeah. 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 So anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up today's show. Thank you guys both for, you know, showing up and being super present. Uh, Adam, thank you for the reading. Thank you for the hard work. And both you guys, thank you so much for the, um, you know, incredible 
intellectual investment that you're putting into this book. Uh, and until the next two week session, uh, two weeks from today, um, everybody enjoy. And, uh, you know, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you, Dan. Thanks so much. Thanks. Bye.